What's up, Laker fans? My name is Sammy Long here with Hoops Talk. We're going to get into a little Lakers Pacers preview for tomorrow night. Huge game. I know I say that every time, but it really is anytime the Lakers are playing because the, the standings are so volatile right now. I'm going to three things today. First thing, how this really is a dangerous matchup tomorrow. If the Lakers don't bring their A game, if they play like they did against Philly last night, they will lose this game. The Pacers are a very good team. Second thing I'm going to get into, I'm going to get into their strengths and weaknesses, what they do well, what they don't do well. And then I'm going to get into the, the current playoff picture as of March 23rd tonight, the recording of this video. So um, there's, there's a lot of things in the playoff picture. The Suns, the Mavs have some difficult games coming up. If the Lakers take care of business, I think there's an opportunity to move up looking at it. But, you know, they have to take care of business. It doesn't matter what other teams do if the Lakers lose games. So getting that a little bit later. First thing, dangerous matchup versus Pacers. This is a team that obviously Lakers beat in the in-season tournament. It's kind of hard looking back at that team, uh, at that game, the finale, because it didn't count for the standings. Like, yeah, it's great. The Lakers got an in-season tournament banner, but. You know, the Lakers aren't in the business of hanging in-season tournament banners. We're in the business of hanging NBA championship banners. And, and it's in a time in the season where, you know, you're penny pinching games and looking at the standings and and who won here and did this team lose. And that, that game didn't count. So it, it's, it's kind of a little bit tough to look back on. But, you know, here we are in front of us. It's a rematch. The Pacers need this game. So you're going to have a sense of urgency from them. They're only a game and a half up in the East from the plan. So they're they're in a little bit different spot than the Lakers. Lakers trying to climb, you know, higher in the plan. They're they're currently sitting out right out of it. But, you know, they don't want to fall into a one and done scenario, just like the, what the Lakers are going to have to do. Last time uh, the Lakers played them in the in-season tournament, they had Buddy Heald on the team. They had Bruce Brown on the team. Those guys are no longer there. And now they got uh, Pascal Siakam, who's – just a great trade for them. I love that pickup. I think him playing with Halliburton is just really kind of gives them a dynamic number two that that's really a number one or a high number two, because before it was like, yeah, Halliburton's a great player, but and you got a lot of collection of guys who, who are very talented, but that's probably not going to get you that far in the East. But now, you know, Siakam, Halliburton, some of these guys, Miles Turner, they, they could, they could make a little noise in the Eastern conference. So very important game in the in-season tournament finale, kind of going back to that game. 80 at 41, huge game. Reeves had 28 off the bench. LeBron had 24. D'Lo had 13. So it was really a masterclass by Anthony Davis. He was, I mean, one of the best games of his Laker career. You look forward to that again tomorrow night. Uh, getting into the strengths and weaknesses of Indiana. One of their weaknesses is they don't rebound well. They're 28th in rebounding, 41.5 rebounds per game. So this, this is a real opportunity to take advantage of them and in, in you know, we've, we've talked about this all year. Al has in the postgame show. I have in my preview videos. The Lakers go the way Anthony Davis goes. When Anthony Davis plays like an MVP candidate and plays up to what he can be, the Lakers can be can beat anyone. And we've seen that with, you know, huge wins this year of the Clippers, Timberwolves, much more Mavs. But, you know, when, when Anthony Davis goes to sleep and is not calling for the ball and is not, you know, playing like the kind of player that we know he can be, the Lakers are very vulnerable, and we've seen it time and time throughout this season. Um, this, some of the strengths for this Indiana team, high scoring. I mean, big-time scores, a lot like the Kings. Uh, when you look at them, they're 122.8 points per game. That's number one in the NBA. They're also number one in the NBA in assists per game, coming in a little over 30. So they like to pass the ball, pass the rock, get it, get it to their playmakers and really, and really get after it. Um, Halliburton leads the team with 20.5 points per game and 11.2 assists per game. So it really flows through him. That that's going to be a key matchup tomorrow night. Obviously, he's their best player, but you know, getting into we've talked about a lot with you know De'Aaron Fox and and Maxi the other night. Who's going to guard him? Because you want to have D'Lo on the floor. Obviously, you want to have Reeves on the floor because they offer that that big scoring threat. But if a guy like Halliburton's getting whatever he wants, you know, in the in the past, De'Aaron Fox and uh, Austin Reeves couldn't stay with him. It's nice that Cam Reddish is back in this game because look at the other night. I mean, he. he was able to somewhat limit Maxi. You know, Maxi, these great players, Maxi, Halliburton, Fox, they're going to get theirs because they're excellent players. But the key is making it difficult for them. You know, Darren Fox is coming off screens and getting wide open layups and and, and kicking to the corner and, and the guys are standing wide open. I mean, that's just not a recipe for success where, you know, Reddish really can get after Halliburton and cause some matchup problems. 
Hopefully, Reeves and D'Lo step up the defense so they can just be on the floor the whole time. But uh, it's nice to know that he's there in case in case it's not going the Lakers' way, especially early in the game. Um, Miles Turner leads them in a rebound, seven per game. Obi Toppin, really good player, really come on. You know, high draft pick with the Knicks, didn't totally work out there. Kind of found a nice role here in Indiana, uh, averaging a little over 56.3 uh, field goal percentage. Andrew, you know, this team's got guys. Andrew Nemhart, a guy the Lakers know very well, sadly. A couple years ago, hit a game winner against us. Doug McDermott's on this team. I mean, he, you know, has had a, had a just a sharpshooter up and down career, but he can get hot. So this is not a team to take lightly whatsoever because if the Lakers do, I think the line was at plus three or for the, uh, for the Pacers. You know, they're expecting a close game tomorrow night, and, and the Lakers really need to bring it. And that gets me into my next point about the playoff picture. So this team, the Pacers actually helped the Lakers the other night by beating Golden State. That was really big for us. Looking at some, you know, the Lakers are out there, the nine seed, the Mavs are above them, the Kings are above them, and, and the Suns are above them. I think we need to root for the Kings at this point. The Kings play the Mavs in their next two games, a home and away, I believe. That, because the Kings, they have a tiebreaker against us. And I think the Mavs with their schedule, like they're a little bit more catchable. I mean, they have to play the Warriors twice still, play the Kings twice still. Some really, I believe the T-Wolves are in there, something like that. So this is a team that I think the Lakers could pass. Uh, and Phoenix, the Lakers have the tiebreaker against. They have a brutal schedule. I was looking at that, even though they're three and a half games up. They play the Spurs. They should win that game. Then they play the Nuggets, Thunder, Pelicans, Cavs, T-Wolves. Pelicans, Clippers in a back-to-back, -back, Kings, and then T-Wolves. I mean, that's that's a brutal schedule, especially for the Sun, a Suns team that's kind of a lot like the Lakers, very up and down, don't know what you're getting night to night. You know, when the Stars are all there, when Beal and and, and Booker and, and uh, Kevin Durant are all on, they look unbelievable. But in nights that they're not, they, they, there's a lot of consistency there. The Warriors seem to be flailing a little bit. They, they have been struggling recently. I don't believe in the Warriors. I, I just think it's too reliant on Steph Curry. Now, them in a playing game against the Lakers, that 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 scares me to death because as we saw in, in the game seven against the Kings last year, Cur you know, the Kings were a better team all year than the Warriors last year. Curry drops 50 in the in the in game seven. You know, that, that's where you get scared of the plan because in mean, March Madness going on right now, it's just one guy can take over a game, and in a one-game scenario, really anybody can beat anybody. So um LeBron also mentioned how the, the team's not focused on the standings. They're just focused on winning. I think that is the right mindset that just go out there and do your job because there's a lot of games coming up. I got into in the other video that, you know, the Lakers should win. This, just focus on one game at a time. And I really hope they take their own advice because looking at the Philly game the other night, you know, that's a game the Lakers should have probably won by 20 and they, they, they won in a ugly game. You know, they got the job done. So I'm not going to sit here and kill them for it, but Stop worrying about the standing. Stop worrying about where everyone's at. Just go out there and win. The Warriors, you know, go, looking back at the plan, they're interesting. They, everyone thought it was like, okay, the Warriors and Lakers just kind of locked in to, to a spot. The Rockets are on a tear. They won eight straight. They, they look unreal. You kind of was waiting for the Rockets to kind of get going. I mean, they got so much young talent on that team. It was kind of weird why they weren't getting it going so fast, especially with, a, you know, a good coach. But um, they're really starting to put it together. So the Lakers got a good lead on them, but the Warriors are flailing. So I know that we struggle with the Rockets this year. LeBron's not losing to Dylan Brooks in a one-game scenario. <laughs> I'm, I I can guarantee you that. Um, but so I, lo I love if the Rockets were to, were to get in the 10 and, and we got to play them in the first round versus the Warriors because the Warriors and Lakers are always classics. I mean, it's like you know in the NFL when you the divisional games – doesn't matter. I mean, how many years were the Steelers great and the Bengals were terrible and every single one of those games would be just like nail-biter games. That's kind of the feel you get with, with with Warriors and Lakers. They know each other so well. You don't want to see them. And I, I do think that even though we struggle with the Rockets, that we could we could, we could could win that game and then, you know, hopefully go into Dallas and, and win that. But maybe the Lakers move up. Maybe we don't have to worry about this. But as of right now, that's where the Lakers are at. Um, thank you guys for listening to the channel. Please like and subscribe. Uh, Alan's going to be on the post game show tomorrow night. I'll be back in the comments. So hope, hope to see you guys there and go Lakers. Thank you.